Oh, so my microphone's going. Does that actually register? Let's find out. And I felt kind of stupid because my phone was very adamant in how Aarakocra was spelled. But then when I started Googling like reference images, I found out that it was, um, it was switching, it was switching a C for a K. So I was like, oh man, even my phone is, god damn it. Oh yeah, uh, that's, oh, thank you for reminding me. So that was the other thing that um, I had written down as a note somewhere, but I think I threw it out because I've got notes everywhere on my desk. Um, I don't know if you were given a notification or something, but I did manage to find out a way to, or I wonder if we did this last time, <laughs> um, but I did manage a way to give you a an editor type status. So, um, if you find your way over there, um, oh no. It always worries me when the application that I have open has like all the sections there, but like um, icons aren't showing or <laughs> like text isn't filling in and it's just kind of like, yeah, this information is there, but the page hasn't loaded completely. <laughs> so it makes me think that either my computer's going slowly or my application's not completely functioning why it? Um, where is it? So you would go to... Oh, they changed some stuff. The profile image can take you to the channel home. Okay. That's not what I want. Um, if you click on... So the way I get there is I click on my little icon in the upper um, right hand corner. So there's like a crown, a bell, a little button that says get bits and then your icon thing. Yeah. And then um, the your whatever image that you have is your like icon thing, and then it brings down this drop down menu. And then for me, I have a thing called Creator Dashboard, so it goes um, my name, channel. Okay, click on that. How do I want to open this? That's the first time it's asked me that. Um, let's see, how do you, um, hold up, okay, so, let's see, you're probably looking at home then. Um, to the left hand side, um, there should be like the, a button with like three bars or something with home and then that should bring down an entire other menu. And then there should be a thing called stream manager. And then I don't know, but here's the thing though, is that I don't know if it's connected to your account or if it's now connected to my account <laughs> to your account okay so how do we tell how do we tell yours to look at mine but anyways all those purple buttons on the quick actions things on the right hand side that's what I want you to have um, access to eventually in your stream manager thing. But I just don't know how to get you to access 
mine, even though I went through that whole rigmarole. Ugh. <laughs> he raided me with a party of one. So basically, so a raid basically means that you take all of your theoretical viewers. Like, so let's say you've streamed for like an hour, right? And now you're tired and you're done. You want to go to bed and you see that like you have a friend in Australia or something that just jumped on. You can basically take all of your viewers and dump it onto that person as a raid. Well, it's also a host, so I guess a raid is more or less like a temporary thing where everyone just kind of comes in in like a digital bus, let's say. So the viewer, sh the viewer count does jump up, but um, they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily in that um, chat room. They're still technically in your chat room, I guess. Um, God damn it. Uh, damn it. I thought that I was able to friggin' God damn it. <laughs> Here, maybe if I click on your shit. I don't know how to get out of here now. Um, clear dashboard. No! God, how do I get out of here? <sighs> okay, so I click on this, I click on Okay. Oh, is that coming through Discord or is that coming through my microphone? Okay, whatever. It works. Okay. Um so Let's go audio input and let's input Discord. And now you should be able to be heard. Yes. Boy. Okay. Yes. I want that on. Except <laughs> uh, what? What are you looking at on your end? Okay. Right. Okay, I can switch that. <laughs> Well, last time it did indeed. <laughs> but you can give it a you can give it a shot. Um Yes. In fact, I'm going to switch over to your art real quick and then you're going to be the focus. <laughs> But I'll... 
<laughs> um. Um, are you, yeah, it said Ogre Mask was stuff, um, is your, is the, is the little colored circle next to your icon, is it yellow or is it green? On, on Twitch, um, upper, the upper right hand icon? Okay, um, click on it and then go over to online or click on it to drop down the menu and then um, activate the online thing so I can try to see your, your nameplate and then hopefully I can click on that and then see if I can, oh, but you would have to, ah, never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna do all that. Um, the idea was that maybe I could access your, your um, not account, but your streamer deck thing, and then um, I can see the roadmap to tell you how to get to mine. But you didn't give me access yet, and that's a that's a that's a different process. <laughs> that's an entirely different process. I don't want to get into yet. Um maybe sometime later when I'm over there and able to stand over your shoulder. <laughs> and that would probably, that would probably be the same day that I'm doing the, that we're going to try to do a VR chat attempt. <laughs> okay. So, um, so now I finally get to ease into what I want to, what we, what I want to talk about. And that's, um, my excuse for trying to force myself to progress in bettering my skill in in an art <laughs> and um this you know actually i was i was i i only really came up with this with this concept of just kind of going th alphabetically through the bestiary the D, D bestiary because um you said that you were taking up um a campaign on saturdays and then hearing that kind of came to a kind of vague hiatus is like, oh man, because now I don't get to buck. Um, um, well, because I was, I was kind of, there was a part of me that was like, so there was probably like a 13% chance that depending on like what campaign they're running and where they are in their whole spiel, then they might've like come across something that we're, you know, that we're in the, that we're currently doing. And then, you know, there's probably always a story or two that we have of a past game, surely, um, maybe involving these things. So it's always interesting. And then, um, you know, I, I, I told you a long time ago that I kind of wanted to challenge myself and just kind of alphabetically go through them all, but I keep getting distracted. And so I was like, well, you know, if you're finally, if you finally have a, um, a campaign that you've sat down and are, you know, doing, you've, you're focused on that, then maybe you could help me focus on this project.
uh, that in a good way, but the module, like the dungeon itself, has ways that you can go, like just bypass complete areas, mm. jump to other areas, and jump back and forth. I just needed to have too much ready at a time instead of like hoping for a more linear progression, which I think is good for the module itself, but it did it go like, okay, can't do that. Go back to Pinterest, find some pictures. Like <laughs> And then this way also wow. because I found out in the past three days, like I you know, so like I said in the past three days I was um just kind of testing out like what where my um where my uh limits are sort of mm. oh no stream has ended um i had to quit it oh okay wait i put that back up nah that's okay i can just i can switch over <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah, then I also thought that, um, oh no, I forgot the clip, um, that I'm really kind of, I'm really bad at, um, anatomy, well, or more or less, like, thinking of anatomy and stuff. Like, I can pull up a reference image, and I can get pretty close to that. Like I'm, I'm pretty okay with, at doing that, but then once it comes to like, I don't want this to look like a starling anymore. You know, I kind of want it to have like eyebrows, and I want to give it like a, I want to kind of cross it with maybe like a beard, like a bearded vulture or something. You know, then suddenly the anatomy starts to change, and then I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> so it's always nice to have a, um, a secondary person who's a little more experienced than that, just to be like, hey, so. If I have this type of a face, what could I do to make the eyebrows not look dumb? <laughs> So is your entire computer just like rebooting or do I have to re... Um, so I guess just for, if anything, for the recording then, um, so my my new little personal project that i'm kind of dragging even along for the ride is um we're gonna go through the D, D monster manual and technically the player manual also and just kind of do each thing alphabetically and just see how far we can get until we either get too busy to continue or we find a better project to focus our time on um so today is focus is the Aracocra, Aracocra, Aaron, Aaron Coke, crazy. Um, even though when I, I was tell I was telling you earlier, and I still stand by this that whenever I pose this this um this idea the thing that's in my head is always cool and then we get to start with the aboleth and that's really simple because they're basically just this oblong shape sort of thing with like at least three other oblong shapes sticking out of one end so they're basically just kind of like a big um like those koi kites you know those japanese koi kite things so that's a really simple thing you know and then all you have to focus on i get to practice like eye like eye and eyelid anatomy type stuff you know the skin wrinkles and stuff like that and that's really kind of simple in my mind and then i and then i'm reminded by external sources but there's a creature that starts with two a's and i go oh fuck what is that and it's the aracocra and i go god 
dang it. <laughs> it's like like to to it to it to a nut to an art novice that's like my nightmare that's like all right we're three days into class <laughs> we're three days into class and where you get to have your final test so be sure to show shading be sure to show good good uh upper body struck like anatomy structure um those wings better be functional otherwise you're gonna get marked down for that and i'm just like no oh and also um other stuff like bird so so bird eyes are generally kind of on the side of their head except for eagles i think because they're more predatory right so they're more in the front or are they still pretty pretty much on the side um the um you know when you the, the, the weirdest the, the weird thing that I always have to kind of struggle with when you like anthropomorphize something that is kind of like an herbivore like a prey species when you know they have the eyes on the side of their head that once you have them start walking on like two legs and you give them like human arms and like chest and torso then it's like all right so do they keep their do they keep their creature head or do you move their their you know do you move their features around So, I know, I don't know, I had it shorter before and then I made it longer and I was just like, I don't know. I decided that I'm just going to leave it because I don't know what I want to do. I just need it there for, to trick my mind into reminding myself that I'm, it's some kind of a bird thing. But it's weird though, because um, if I had... And, and I can just imagine this, right? So if I had a parrot's beak there, though, the head would be a lot less um, dart-like. It would be a lot more closer to, like, a human, I think. Like, you know, just tall instead of long. Whereas because I accidentally made the beaks, the beak 
placeholder so long it's more hummingbird and so or stork and so now you know the the head is it's so easily to just see it as a something that's long and dart like do birds have do birds have like the pit bull crease thing it's like down the middle of their head Don't they have, don't they have roots in the elemental plane of air? Oh, so I, I did want to wait until you had your setup like all nice and running again but um a question that i did have and you can answer this while you look up that stuff as well is um in your opinion in your personal position do you believe that the aracocra fall into only a certain category of birds or do you think that they could be anything that exists within our realm just anthropomorphized <laughs> Because I'm looking at a couple reference things, and there's a there's a peacock that looks really cool. There's a toucan that I really that I really approve of. Um, there's a lot of vultures. People really like the idea of vultures. But like the but like the heavy metal looking vultures, not just like the standard like buzzard, like the. Um, That looks like the um like the the living version of the um the doctor in Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> a little bit. I was trying to think like if it was a very intelligent creature, it would need more room for a brain. 
Uh, and since it since it has the use of like hand like appendages, it probably wouldn't emphasize using a beak so much to do work for it. Mm. That would be emphasized. But I was also thinking like if some sentient creature made I don't know these things and I'm just like human. That's a good that's a good model. Let's stick a beak on it. That'd be kind of funny. As opposed to actual bird things evolving up into a more sentient version of themselves. Or smarter versions of themselves. I suddenly have no care or love of this little crown thing that I'm doing. So I'm just going to do like a hawk thing. And I'm going to have to probably make this be smaller. Called the Wind Dukes of Aqua or Aqua. Mm -hmm. um, air things. But it doesn't say that those things are air elementals, nor does it say what those things actually are, besides that they, um, they're from a race of things called the Vati. And so it doesn't say whether these things were made, whether they evolved. It's just that they work for those bigger nasties it could be the same relationship that the um the gith <laughs> the gith creatures have with their you know home <clears throat> you know they just kind of exist there but they're not necessarily elemental at all Um, let's see, how do I make this more hawkish? These do count as humanoids, um, which I don't know what that necessarily means, like if humanoids uh, count as like a thing from the natural plane, but... Uh, not necessarily. They, I think that distinction exists purely for... Um effects and stuff like that like i've become kind of disillusioned to the whole like descriptions descriptors that they give so like giant humanoid elemental like those things are they're cool sort of like oh okay so there, there's a theory as to where they could come from but ultimately those descriptions are there so that you know if you can hold monster or if you can hold person <laughs> mm -hmm. that's true how the heck? How the heck do blender artists do feathers? Like that has to be a like fur is one thing, but like feathers feel like on on initial con like concept like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like fur is kind of just this like generic sort of thing, but like feathers can be, but there's like prominent. Like, depending on the bird, there are, like, prominent, like, detail feathers that you're just like, all right, so that has to be very specific. Mm -hmm. I guess I could do a... Mm, I guess I could do a particle system, but I don't... I don't wanna... Oh, why is my darn topo off? Robin, no. They would do it. I I don't know. It's such a last step. Like if I like what I have experience in is sculpting. So if I were to think about it, like I wouldn't even touch feathers until I had like the big broad shapes of things. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's where I get very paranoid with um 
like avian features is because they are very streamlined so it's like i always feel I like i sit back and I, and I think yeah i mean that looks pretty done but then i look back at another like another reference image but my mistake is that usually it's a different bird so i go oh that's a really cool feature maybe i can put that in on this guy <laughs> you know oh man that's a physical feature that i'm missing maybe i could do that What is the benefit, do you think, of the, or what, not the benefit, compare for me in your, in your, uh, in your mind's eye, the benefits or the drawbacks of the, like, the griffin ear type of a thing, or just like the classic, like, bird hole in the head for an ear? <laughs> Ag, I guess. <laughs> Wind catching on. Um. Uh. We're talking just like visually. Uh, yeah, like you start off that's with one like, of those things. Do you prefer? <laughs> um, I prefer. I pre I prefer wing like ear like things. I want to say that it, it just creates more interesting silhouettes that can come out uh, and it helps define where something is looking, I guess. But in general, I would say that it, it doesn't make much sense why it should be there. It just like would catch on the wind uh, too often and be more or less annoying. <laughs> it, I don't think it would sort of serve the same uh, funneling effect that it does in uh, mammals for like listening and hearing. It's interesting. They bring up like uh, sometimes when you watch like National Geographic and things, uh, uh, they're like these animals' eyesights are like twenty times better than humans. Um, but or uh, there's like sense of smell uh, and yada 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 yada. But I don't think I've ever heard like any statistics statistics listed for a bird creature on how well they actually hear. <laughs> Same with like lizard things, things that have that don't have that like an actual ear shape to funnel in sound. Like, I wonder if they actually don't, if that is one of those things that we have over them. Uh, and I'm sure like you hear that with like a um, like feline like things or hounds or variety of other creature uh, mammals that have ear shapes, but they don't really talk about it with them. Um, Um, I mean, owls tend to be like the leading, the leading, like, this creature has the most amazing, <laughs> amazing hearing, but it's not because of the ear necessarily, it's because of the design of their face, <laughs> like the entirety of their face. <laughs> Listening with the face. It's a weird one. Or, yeah, I mean, that's at least how I understand it. Uh, rotate. It's like back here. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I've never heard that, but I'm not going to say I hate it. Oops. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's barn owls or something. It's one of those like owls that gets like super white. Is that the barn or the snowy? Owls are white. Yeah. In doing this, it's making me think about like a. I think I would love to to stage a game on another plane, like, um, and to really, I don't know, I think think out is hard. I think the hardest thing about thinking that out would be level scaling, because they assume if you can do interplanar travel and all that business, um, then 
um, then you're very high leveled. But I think, I don't know, I always like playing things from a lower level and getting, getting used to it, feeling your character out and learning who they are at a lower level and then getting into things and solving issues that way. Because at higher levels, I don't know, it always feels, it seems to feel the same, that you're just fighting the same couple of like super high level creatures. Mm. But I think it'd be fun to like, um, like see what kind of creatures could live in that world at low levels. Like, cause you can play an Aarakocra at like level one uh, and level up, but I don't know, you could also populate it with Air Genasis, uh and maybe even other little creatures like the lowlands of like Kenku that or Kenku like creatures that uh escape Shadowfell or whatever. Or have very distant ties to Shadowfell. Yeah. Oh they already have a mirror modifier, that's right, I forgot about that. Apply. Hate your big bird ostrich looking. <laughs> it's nasty. Hate it. It's so much. Let's see if I remember how to do this modifier. So I do the cube, and then I select everything else. This one being the last, and then I control M. Nope, that's wrong. I don't know what to do with this thing. Oh, I hate looking at it. We're going to start another one. Control L. Control L. Modifiers. Ha ha! I'm getting better at that. All right. Well, at least now there's something a little more interesting to look at than just streamlined penguin head. <laughs> penguin. I think. Ugh. It's weird thinking of what sounds they would naturally make because I think most birds make dis... I don't know. Not most birds. Lots of birds make very surprisingly disgusting sounds. Yeah, you never really imagine that a penguin would make like a... like a sea lion-ish sound <laughs> that buzzes more. Um, I think that would be a funny. So you know how you know how the dwarves have you know they've got the you've got your normal you've got your normal like material plane dwarf you've got like the ashy um, underdark um, like abyssal dwarf sort of thing mm -hmm. and then there's like the fire plane I don't know if they're still considered dwarves though but you know they've got the fire not they get changed dwarf. quite a lot. <laughs> I think they're actually uh, they count as elementals. Oh, okay. But yeah, they like I think they you still think it enough there's enough there that or say like yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> we used to be, but then you guys just took it a little too far in the forge. Um I think that'd be a cool deviation of Aarakocra to have a penguin in the um, elemental plane of water. Mm. So they're still technically flying. It's just now it's underwater. <laughs> and they know where all the air pockets are. <laughs> Nasty. Being that blubber, um, various fats and stuff is like, I don't know how you stay warm, but also makes you more hydrodynamic uh, in swimming and stuff. It'd be weird to play a like a, a, a elemental plane of water version of things, and everyone's just like a little thick. <laughs> I think that's a pretty great one. something in even looking at the the standard picture of the aracorca in the monster manual is that i think it's strange that they don't have like good tail feathers like a weird like i don't know feet are nasty they don't make enough sense to me how would i want to draw one of these things Ew. 
jack things? No. Birds have this like strange heel like things. So maybe they would have those ridiculously large chest. But I wonder if it's like regular arms it would be like tiny crappy appendages. I guess maybe it would look more like Maybe it'd be reversed that their back is like super big, like turtles, so that they have really big, strong back muscles so that their wings could actually flop and fly and stuff. Oh, that's lame. But then their front pecs, pretty lame. And they have these like taller, little dino arms. Descaros. Dang it, grab brush. Is it better if these things are just squares then? It's kind of annoying. nasty body flaps. It still need very big tail feathers to steer. Shattering the crap out of this thing. Give it a little bit of texture that I wasn't accounting for. Oh, that's interesting. Got rid of my mirror modifier though, that's also kind of annoying. <laughs> That's fine then. Um, now can we do stuff with this? Nope, and that's not what I want to do. You know, there's one thing that I've noted, like um, there have been a couple campaigns where um, the DM's thrown an Aarakocra, like at our, not at our party, but like near our party. And I gotta say, like every time that we get to interact with one, it's kind of like disappointing, you know? Like they're not really, I don't know if they're like hard to role play or something, but like they're, you know, they're always kind of two dimensional and. Ah. Or, sorry, one dimensional I and. I think it's, no, it's it always comes to, or not always comes to, but I think it is kind of like a strange thing that in a lot of a lot of races or D and D creatures and stuff, they're so one dimensional. Uh, like the most interesting things that this is is that they serve these um, the Dukes of Aqua, the Wind Dukes of Aqua. <laughs> I was just like, really, that's the most boring thing because who's like who really defines themselves of like I work for the president of the United States. That is all. Whoa. What do you want to do? I don't know. Does it bring glory to our president? <laughs> uh, I hate everything about this. I hate everything about that. I hate everything about it. All right. So let's theoretically experiment with just doing it straight off of the face. And here. Kind of hate that too. <laughs> I guess it would be, I don't know, better or less to have to have players uh, 
pull, um, make more decisions about like the personalities of the Era Corpora and just have more player character Era Corporas and stuff. I think that's why you need to play like an actual like from uh, campaign in the plains and stuff and start thinking about like actual countries or nations or tribes and what do, what do they want? What are those people like? Who's a deviation from that? Like unless every single era Corcra has personally dealt with these um, uh, air dukes. That seems weird. Like, I don't know. Mm. I feel like the last couple times that I've ever played with somebody that had an Era Corcra. Or that, you know, uh, the DM put an Eric Corker in. <laughs> they always seem to want to go, like, with, like, the very stereotypical Native American. <laughs> I always think that's a little bit, I don't know, it's weird. Even in, like, this description about the Eric Corker, like, the Eric Corker have no concept of political borders or property ownership. And the value of gems, gold, and other precious materials mean little to the Aracorcra. In their eyes, a creature should use whatever, nece whatever is necessary and then cast uh, what is left to the wind for others to use. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> like, I wonder how often they're like, I'm going to put this shirt on right now. I like it. Oh, it's sweaty. I'm just going to take it off and just leave it there. Hopefully someone else likes it. The whole world is my goodwill. Is that still the monster manual, or is that the player? The, the, player? the monster manual. Ooh, I guess I can pull that up, too. I'm interested. What do they say about the player version of it? What was in that in? Volos? Um, I think they started, actually, in a... Uh, what's it called? Elemental Evil one? Yeah. They started in a errata thing. My inter my not my internet, but like my web browser has been weird lately in the sense that it like pretends I don't have internet, even though I've got like two other things up that tell me I do have internet. <laughs> it, it's just like, no, you don't you don't have it. We're having trouble locating this this website. So right now, at the angle that I've got my bird face, it kind of looks like the, um, um, whatever that eagle's name that was in the Muppets. Yeah, you don't remember that, like, what's his name? Now I'm looking up two things simultaneously. <laughs> um, Muppet. Sam Eagle. Sam Eagle is a Muppet character known for his ultra patriotism and disciplined manner of being. Sam originated in the television show The Muppet Show, where he was performed by Frank Oz. You know he's got a he's got a very Bernie Sanders kind of hair style in both eyebrow and the horseshoe thing going on, but he's got like tired, angry eyes and I mean bird face. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. Um, there we go. 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 I 
messed up a long time ago in the sense that I forgot to put these put the mirror half of this beak to the other half, so then when I went into uh, my finalized it, it's not technically two different halves, so when I try to like add stuff to it, it'll kind of push the other half away from it. Uh, that's funny, I was going back to that. I don't need to have more cancel. Let's start with that. Come on, let's start with that. I don't need to have more cancel. Um, I think I broke it down to the point there. I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it down to the point there. I think I broke it I don't know if I just suck, where there's like something I'm not doing there. Like, I've seen, I've seen some people do the same control, and it's like, crazy. But, I don't know, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. You've got a moose. Or you've got a deer. You've got deer in my hummingbird. No, you've got a hummingbird in my deer. <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't know, I'm going over the different, the different methods that I've seen people add, like, headdresses and stuff to just creatures in general, and all of them feel really tedious right now. <sighs> like, I'm just not that confident in what I'm able to do <laughs> to be able to be like, yeah, I can totally set off on that path and have it be a, a thing that's possible. Um, that might help, but I don't know. Yeah. Not a hundred percent certain. I'm just making up stuff. Well, I'm just trying to think of, like, I'm just trying to think ahead a little bit and just being like, all right, so if I were to continue going, like, how how would I do the feathering? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, let's see. You know what I haven't done yet is add eyes. I don't fully, I've never done this before. How do you like adding eyes? Do you just make like balls and stuff and stick them in the face, or? That's what I've seen done. So, I mean, I do like like as you've seen, I do like hollow out like crevices for the eye hmm. to kind of exist. And then, but my. But where my issue comes in is I don't know. I don't know. Like I don't know if if what I did was okay or not, or if I need to move it. <laughs> <clears throat> so I guess that's kind of where you could come in a little bit and be like, should probably make more flesh around that area, or you should move the eyeball <laughs> in more. That's gross. I would, uh, I'd pull them. I don't know. It depends if, like, you want it more of a hunter creature or human kind of thing, or if you want them on the side of the heads. But I would pull them closer into the nose, um, because you probably need flesh and stuff to build up around them. Elsewise, you poke your eyes all the time. <laughs> ah. Um, 
Yeah, like I can, cause like I can hollow out, you know, I can hollow out the bridge a bit, make that shallower, and then I can bring this, I can bring this outer edge out, you know, just build it. But like I said, that's kind of where I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Like, is that better? Should move it in more. So. And then I See, I like it. I like it in like that a little bit more, but I like things a little bit more realistic. And usually, if I mean, if you feel your face, there's a big pronounced bone to stop things from like hitting your eyes on the side. Standard, I guess. Yeah, a little bit. Make it feel like something, something else, something not human. I guess that's one thing I could do instead of trying to make. I could just do um, what's it called? I can build up the eye ridge. Here, oh, that's what's going on. Build up the eye ridge here, like a lot, and then have that shoot out. Ah, not that much though. More, more. Not that much though. Oh no. I want it to lift. Lift. Give me lift. Ugh. There we go. And then make these come back. Okay, let me grab this guy. Do it, this guy. Ah. Weird silhouette. Your guy? Weird silhouette. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like that's it's all it's done. I guess I could look up references of what other people do with these creatures. Yeah.
Oh. Hmm. you find um ah. that these like vulture aracocra uh, they have a history i guess in the forgotten realms being a very specific place so that makes sense why they're all vulture like as opposed to just people being like i want vultures <laughs> but it makes sense. Weird. This has turned into like less of a talking about era corpora and exploring it. At least for me, I don't know. I'm still drawing it, but the thing that's got that like perked my interest the most is thinking about just like the elemental plane or any of the other planes. Realistically, I'm thinking about how, like, where I would want to be, or where I would want to run things, and what other kind of creatures would be there. It's hmm. a neat thing which which plane plane would you prefer elemental air or should we just keep it to thinking about elemental air right now um uh, that's the problem with doing it on the actual model um earth sounds like a nightmare because there's things that just fuse through the earth and just kind of consume anything that's not earth <laughs> um, mm. I hate that fire sounds uncomfortable even though the city of brass sounds like a really cool place to be um, mm. water sounds very limit like limiting um so I mean, obviously this is coming from a from a creature that um, you know has only really known a material footing and like breathing air. So I don't really know. I don't really know how um, much adaption could happen with the elemental plane of water. Mm -hmm. So air would probably be would probably be the easiest thing to go towards even though the storms and the random gravity shifts might be really annoying <laughs> um, earth fire wind water would you be interested in like those all those other weird god planes of like the endless forest or um plane of order and thrones <laughs> i mean valhalla always sounds like a cool place to go <laughs> um especially like at least in like 3.5 3 edition uh how every day everyone experiences the like uh and you just come back to alive. Yeah. Um. Oh, they call it. Uh, or is it still Valhalla? But I see Ysgard. <laughs> 
Y S G A R D. What the hell is Carceri? Ah, uh, this one doesn't tell me. Ooh. Like that. Yeah, the ethereal plane sounds really drab and just a bunch of people either being super angry about how they died or being like <laughs> just generically annoying in general. Generically annoying. <laughs> Welcome to the ethereal plane. The uh, do you want to hear about my day? <laughs> <laughs> the Feywild always sounds kind of cool, except for the fact that whenever you like temporarily leave like there's like a 35% chance that you just forget <laughs> everything uh, I never understood the shadow fell like is it kind of like the elemental plane of fire and Gena where there's just like a constant like drain on your energy or is I think it just... so a place where shadows exist <laughs> and shadow creatures. Depending on how you take it, I want to say that it does feel that I I think I've read that it, it does just kind of just drain you. Um, shadow fell despair one through three apathy. The cre the character is has disadvantage on death saving throws and on dexterity checks for initiative and gains the following flaw. I don't believe I can make a difference to anyone or anything. God, Dad, it's not a phase, okay? This is just who I am now. Um, dread, the character, four through five, Dread, the character has disadvantage on all saving throws and gains the following flaw. I am convinced that this place is going to kill me. Uh... Yeah, I think they. Uh, it sound. It looks like they changed it a little bit. Like I remember that it was just like a drain on your like life force, like every like, f like every five minutes or something. And then if you die, if you are dropped to zero because of this, then you become like a shadow or something. <clears throat> but it looks like they just changed it so it's more of just like a madness type thing where you know you have you are either afflicted with apathy, dread, or madness. The character has disadvantages on ability checks and saving throws that use intelligence, wisdom, or charisma, and gain the following flaw. I can't tell what's real anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, plane of fire. The City of Brass, wait, does the City of Brass have an anti-heat thing? I don't know, seeing that, like, I think it is, like, where the Ifreti live. Uh, the weather on the plain is marked by fierce winds and thick ash. Although the air is breathable, creatures not native to the plain must cover their mouth and eyes to avoid stinging cinders. The Ifrit use magic to keep the cinder storms away from the city of brass, but elsewhere in the plain, the wind is always at least blustery and rises to hurricane force during the worst storms. Huh. So yeah, they use magic to keep it out of the city. I guess that makes sense, because even though the Ifrit don't really give a crap about, like, fire in general, like, they still need to be able to trade with things that aren't you know that are planar travelers so it kind of would suck if like a snow creature <laughs> came in there was just like Ugh. probably not the person that i would send <laughs> <laughs> i guess that's true so in our current in our current storyline um we found the frog hemoth like demigod and of like of all the gods in in the tomb of annihilation thing this guy has been written as the most like least thought out character so far and, and you so, really hated that monkey thing before well the monkey thing the, monkey, the monkey thing was just written badly 
Mechanically? to interact. Yeah, to interact with it. Like if like if you really wanted to play a character with like an evil sort of inter like then maybe you might interact with it. But otherwise, like ninety percent of the player base is never going to interact with that god, you know, because of the way that it's set up, right? Okay. <clears throat> but the way that this Frogemoth guy is set up, like it's free to interact with, and it's relatively obvious. Like you have to kind of make a leap, like a, a leap of faith at the end, to find out um, to figure out like his puzzle thing to un to unlock him but once you do so his his item that that he's attached to are these braces of archery right so it gives you a plus two dex bonus to um ranged attacks in general so you could have like a gun or you could have a rock or you could have a spear but it gives you proficiency with the short and the long bow so that's pretty cool even though none of our party has has one um but his, but the the god, the god himself's boon toward you is your strength score becomes um, twenty three. And just sitting there, it's just like, but your item's a dex bonus thing. Like, what? <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. <laughs> it's like if you're if you're a god that's based on strength, you know why is your item this dexterity bonus thing? It's kind of weird. Under, I don't know, be interesting, which they don't do a very good job of. Um, trying to make it so that it's really trying to encourage you to throw things and to throw, like, tables and chairs and people and other things like that. Possibly. You know what I really miss? Like, there might be a better way to do it, but um, the thing that I am really kind of um, missing on because I am such a novice at, at sculpting in this program um, is like an eraser, like an eraser tool or something. Because, <laughs> like, you have, like, sure, you have Control Z to just kind of back away from everything, but um, if you making if you make a lot of edits to like the straight up mesh itself um yeah. there's not a lot of options for you to like kind of go back on a mistake that you've done without like going a couple miles to do so <laughs> mm -hmm. at least that's the way it feels um i guess instead of... i don't know sculpture there's not like an eraser version <laughs> with like clay well with clay you just have to push stuff or like something away yeah i mean I, I don't know if you saw them or not before you changed your thing but like you know with, with, with the with the the eyebrow crown that i was trying to make um for that um with actual clay for that i would just um i just rip those clay pieces out you know and then just smooth over what i had Mm -hmm. or what i wanted to keep you know but i can't i don't have a rip function <laughs> in here so okay interesting but i think i know so instead of that i'm just gonna make a blob i'm just gonna make a couple blobs and then i'm gonna make those into just short little feather things by doing this. No. Dang it, it's too much. It's better. It's not exactly what I wanted, but it's
before. Now I've got kind of this Digimon-esque eyebrow thing going on. <laughs> Ooh, good. Um, let's see, what else can I add? I guess I can fix this back of the head. What's going on back here? What's going on? And then I think I'm gonna fix the back of this head and then sort of wrap up and then I can let you go. Unless you have absolutely nothing going on. Oh, there's definitely things I probably should do. In which case, that's weird. <laughs> so for other things like i'm i'm also trying to um like in my spare time make a um like a little like samoyed kind of little character that's gonna walk around and maybe like do some bow staff stuff but for creatures like that and what i'm kind of dealing with right now with the back of this bird head is like where does the head actually kind of start to slope down to the neck and where do like the head feathers kind of like puff out you know mm. like where is the actual body and then where is the the you know where's the actual head where's the actual flesh because uh. that was the other thing that i'm kind of struggling with in learning in trying to better myself in this program is like what what do i what do i sculpt and then what do i leave out to add in as a like a particle system or like a hair simulation later because <clears throat> yeah because that's how i've seen a lot of people do like the feathers and stuff they just make it like a texture map or something and then they just um kind of form fill <laughs> everything in Deform grab. I don't think I can help you with. I'm not sure. Anatomy, nor about that program <laughs> in specific. But birds are, I don't know. When you take away a lot of their feathers, they gangly, nasty things. <laughs> again, that's like actual birds as opposed to um, artistic renditions that feel like birds. Maybe that's Should there be more of a slope, less of a slope? Maybe I need less chin. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, if only I didn't mess up the beak, let's say that's a pretty good start. It's definitely not a finished product by any means, but I got a general idea of what I want to be fanciful. Then I need to figure out what I want to do with the back of this head. I could do like a Roadrunner thing. See, now without you here talk, <laughs> talking at me through the whole thing, I'd probably have ended like um, still trying to figure out what kind of an eyebrow ridge I would like to have. <laughs> See, because like this little, like this little roadrunner back feather thing like that's a feather <laughs> you know it's like a bunch of feathers but the actual head is kind of stupider than that so 
So it's weird to kind of sit down and consider like, all right, what am I, what am I going to sculpt and then what am I going to add? Later, as just like yeah. angly bits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's actual and then what's superficial? How do people do eyelids? <laughs> Is it a part of the, is it a different mesh altogether or do they make it from the actual thing? That's a, that's a thing I haven't been paying attention to. <laughs> Some yes, that's a kind of a question or what you want to do with it. If the eyelids will actually change, if you need to change expressions and stuff, that feels like it should be something separate. Yeah, that's the craziness about the like the designers that were the first the first ones to kind of like anthropomorphize a character. It's like how, how did they decide like what you know like what this this animal that doesn't that rarely blinks its eye, like how do you give that an eyelid and make it look like that belongs? <laughs> All right, I have reached a point where I now have a laundry list of um, things that I need to research and teach myself. Um, <laughs> and we're five minutes off from four o'clock. So uh, any, whoa, there's that one. I'll let you uh, get as finished as you can with that one. Are there oh, words yeah. with cheek with cheek things? Or are they pretty slim? I don't know. Are they I guess... pretty slim on cheek fluff? <laughs> I don't I guess so. But like cheeks serve a, a protective purpose of like protecting the eyes. So I don't know. I guess that would be all because it doesn't need, they don't need to do like too many chewing actions like we would uh, to have like very big cheek muscles. Mm. As far as I know. Oh, you know what? I Okay, that's an interesting concept I could add. So there's this one character that I'm looking at and a way that I could make give more interest inter interesting things to look at for the head is to not so much make like individual feathers but just to make like a kind of like a I hesitate to say a head skirt <laughs> but um, basically just kind of like follow this line here or this divot that I'm making and just kind of mm -hmm. extend that out so that it's um, just, you know. Like a little mane-like thing? Yeah, kind of like a little mane-like thing, but just like assume that it's kind of like a turkey thing of, or like a like a smaller version of a peacock feather kind of thing for the head. <laughs> that could work. I could give that a try later. This is definitely giving me some ideas to think about um, on the line of like, I wanted to run a campaign in a different place. <laughs> like, what would be interesting? And it's sad that I enjoy <laughs> compiling lists. <laughs> well, think good. that like, I would enjoy looking at like, imagining the world and thinking about like, even of, like spears, like if the standard sphere is an easy thing for a flying thing to use just because it's float and I just poke or I drop it on people. Mm -hmm. You really wouldn't want to have it be too long because you couldn't be hard to angle your body and fly properly. Um, you wouldn't want it like in the way of your arms. And so like spears would be different. There probably wouldn't be as many swords um, or like maces would be a weird thing. But maybe maces that had like, like a 
morning stars because you could drop that and like it did spike onto somebody. I don't know. Like thinking that uh, uh things would be probably more interesting weapons. Just like kick and like grasp at people. But armor wouldn't be such such a huge business. I think it would also be interesting to give the players um, agency as to like you could like you could still give them like free reign of what creatures exist in that area, but you have to for like but if it's something really big and cumbersome like um like a Goliath that exists in the elemental plane of air or something, it's just like okay, you have to explain to me a how he exists there and b why he exists there. <laughs> Pretty neat. It's, oh, that's good. Towns. it's kind of a, it's kind of a thing I wasn't expecting to have here is to give you ideas for your campaign. I guess that was. Dying. I'm not going to do it for that campaign. That campaign's different. Yeah. That stuff. Uh, that one I am without without spoiling too much. Actually, they're not going to watch. Screw it. Um, <laughs> I mean, this isn't their kind of kick, but like what I'm exploring with them is their the material plane being uh, privateers, like sailors, um, but they're dealing with a crashed um, uh, Lithid ship and dealing with Lithids and Githyankis. So I've been doing a little bit of that, of trying to think out like, how would the Lithid and Gith Yankee, you know, have their own ships and methods and like how would they orient things? How would like serving quarters and I don't know, command centers and recreation areas all be in that area? But also like laying down some rules for like how their characters would do stuff because they are sailors. And <laughs> so but now, I, I don't know, this is like, this has expanded it just a little bit more to start thinking like, hmm, if I, I did want to do like an air area, what would that be like? It's too bad. I don't really ever want to just be the person to write quests and stuff or come up with indie worlds to publish. So maybe if I did like that, I could make some more actual money or have a purpose for why I am sating and thinking about it too much. <laughs> gonna happen. Likely. Not gonna. Dang. Gross. Ah, nope, that's also wrong. Well, that's not exactly what I had in my head, but it's uh, kind of the concept. <laughs> Arts of ideas. And out of this is. I can always mess. I can always mess up the individual things by doing stuff like this. Sorts of weird like that. Oops. Not that one. Yeah, something like that. And then just make it more make it more detailed and flesh it out more. I wonder what we're going to be drawing once we actually do get to the Abolith. Just blob nasties. <laughs> Different blob. Ooh, you're going to have a lot of fun with teeth maybe, on how you want to do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've had, I've had some um, practice with teeth when I was doing like some masks 
um, a couple months ago. Hmm. So I've got ways that I can cheat out <laughs> um, little triangle teeths or little like full on like conical canines. Good. Definitely. But. All right, so I guess that's all I have for that. I don't like it. Uh, maybe I'm getting more lazy, but I was like thinking more conceptual. But uh, I think I, if like... you, I think if you move the neck back a little bit, so it's not so hunched over, but more like up and kind of scouting ish, mm. then it would look a little more imposing instead of kind of like this scrawny kind of like hey gotta get home <laughs> True. The way okay. i don't know see like what i was thinking at least what i was drawing is that like with trying to think out like how the wings would work you actually need really a huge muscular back like we probably wouldn't would have this strange hunchy this creature at least in my mind like i don't know I don't know. So it was like shifting the thing, so I was just following that down the rabbit hole. Got it. This nasty thing is the only thing that I like. Really? <laughs> I hate that one the most. I hate it a lot, but <laughs> I I enjoy hating it. <laughs> it makes me really uncomfortable. But I think that's something successful in that. Whereas the other things, I'm like, I don't know. I think what I like, what bugs me the most on those other things is they're just strange silhouette things. And I wish this, the issue with like the legs, bug me a lot and the tails. So if you look at like, I don't know. I think, I don't know. Bird, bird legs in general are bizarre. Uh, things to look at that I would have to do a lot more research in how those are formed, <laughs> but um, but then to try to like them to a humanoid kind of form is strange. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. All right, I'll let you go. Or what did you like about yours? Um, I like that I actually got to the point where I've started to think about like detail because before I was just like, how do I make the generic shape? <laughs> um, mm. I know what I need to work on in the sense that I need to remember to apply my modifiers so I don't get little weird holes like this. Mm. Um, I need to learn how to do eyelids in case if I actually do want to like add them at all. Um, and then after that, I guess it's just kind of learning, like the only other two things that I can think of that I need to like improve on are like the more subtle, like anatomy features, like more like face muscles and stuff like that. And like what should belong and what should not belong on an anthropomorphized bird person. <laughs> um, and then just learning how to do more like, um, fancy details like you know head feathers and other stuff like that because i'm pretty sure that a lot of that's going to be in the in the particle system i just don't want to deal with that right now or at least maybe any other day i might want to try to deal with that but it's like hot and i didn't sleep very well last night because it was like stupid hot where i'm sleeping so yeah excuses